Hydrogen cars have completely flopped. Sales for new fuel cell vehicles in 2022 fell by more than 20%, whereas the entire automotive industry grew by around 4%. This has resulted in fuel cell electric vehicles accounting for only 0.02% of global passenger vehicles in 2022, with long-term projections only reaching around a tenth of a percent or 80,000 vehicles by 2025. However, folks, despite these poor numbers from Toyota, Hyundai, and Honda, who are the global automakers investing in fuel cell vehicles, all hope is not lost for this revolutionary fuel in the transportation sector. And there's a few key reasons as to why that's the case. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, folks, let's understand why hydrogen even exists as a topic for the electrification race. As I'm sure many people watching this video are familiar with, Toyota is the primary automaker that has kicked off the hydrogen electric revolution for the passenger vehicle market. Hydrogen as a fuel has been used in industry for more than 100 years. It is used to make ammonia for fertilizers, to manufacture and process steel, and yes, even manufacture glass. However, since the invention of hydrogen fuel cell technology in the 1920s, costs have come down significantly and power densities have increased at levels we haven't seen in the past. And this is where Toyota saw an opportunity to use this electric technology for the internal combustion engine replacement, which it believed was hydrogen. Toyota Mirai was the first commercially viable platform that used a hydrogen tank compressed at over 10,000 PSI to power a fuel cell electric drivetrain powered completely through zero emissions if using green hydrogen. Whether it be fact or fiction, the reality is the Mirai set a benchmark for how complex and innovative fuel cell and electric solutions could really get. This vehicle came out at a time when global electrification was very much a nascent industry, and automakers like Tesla, for example, were not successful in selling battery electric vehicles profitably and at scale. There was a lot of concerns around charging infrastructure and obviously refueling times because battery packs at that time were actually still quite costly. However, Toyota being Toyota, they stuck with their instincts and their radical focus on innovation and being industry leaders. The company that dominates the best-selling charts year on year out for automotive vehicles took a big leap with their fuel cell program, which even today is losing them a lot of money. This either is a sign of a company seeing an innovative vision or a company heading for disaster. And based on my research and Toyota's success so far, I'd bet on the former. And Toyota's innovative and bold step in this direction led to automakers like Hyundai and Honda to follow suit in 2017 and 2019 with the likes of the Nexo and the Honda Clarity. And given the big challenges faced by hydrogen adoption on a retail level, sales for fuel cell vehicles in 2019 topped almost 10,000 units in the US, which certainly for that time was a very successful number, having had zero sales in 2016. However, unfortunately for hydrogen, that's where the good news ended over the past five years. Despite a much expected dip during the pandemic, Sales in 2022, unsurprisingly, went down from 2021, whereas global battery electric vehicle sales grew by more than 40 to 50 percent. And the mainstream media has been doing their best at voicing this very fact, as enthusiasm around battery electric vehicles has skyrocketed since the start of the pandemic. Hydrogen has been falling into this realm of skepticism because of pro-clean antics around hydrogen and its use case. You see, although poor sales numbers are the last thing you want to see for a nascent industry, this isn't really something new for the automotive sector. 
whether it be gasoline engines in the 1910s or electric vehicles in 2004, each automotive technology faced its own hurdles at the very beginning for adoption, scale, and cost reduction. And the simple fact of the matter is right now, although Toyota, Hyundai, and Honda have been making very bold bets and going in the right direction for the clean energy transition, the time for hydrogen for automotive at least, is simply not right now. Because, you see, hydrogen will undoubtedly play a huge role in the decarbonization race. And electrification is a subset of decarbonization, which is where electric vehicles come in. However, right now, the only bottleneck facing wide-scale adoption of fuel cell technology is the idea of low retail availability of the fuel. As of December 2022, there are only 53 open stations in California, with basically none across the rest of the United States. This is largely in part of California having thrown a lot of subsidies and money at investing in hydrogen retail stations, and also it being one of the first states to adopt clean energy mandates. But it also has a lot to do with the fact that once the ball gets rolling in one state, other states tend to be very slow to follow through. Not only did hydrogen's commercialization in the automotive sector coincide with the rapidly declining battery costs, which have allowed electric vehicles to reach insane scale, but right now hydrogen is gaining more adoption and steam in the back-end grid side of things for storage and heavy-duty transport. And why exactly would that be the case? Well, the answer is extremely simple, because hydrogen's real benefits in the transportation sector are witnessed where weight and cargo payload are extremely critical. When it comes to passenger vehicles, weight doesn't really matter that much, neither does range, because most people drive to work on a day-to-day -day basis. However, for industries like aviation, shipping, and heavy-duty cargo, where weight and space do matter, hydrogen offers the best alternative. However, on the other hand, for cars, that value proposition diminishes rapidly as compared to lithium-ion batteries. A car is simply too small to allow hydrogen's gravimetric energy density to really stretch its legs. As we all know, hydrogen is volumetrically energy dense, but not as energy dense as lithium ion batteries, which is why hydrogen takes up quite a lot of space in a regular vehicle chassis. And although that does not hold back automakers from creating innovative designs and rapidly evolving technologies, it does decrease the marginal benefit you get from using a fuel cell powertrain. And because the economies of scale in this industry right now for automotive is simply very low, the costs of the technology also tend to be higher than battery electric. What this means is that the true benefit and role of hydrogen will be in those industries that are near impossible to decarbonize with batteries alone, whether that be shipping, aviation, trucking, or rail. However, just like any technology, it not being effective today does not mean it won't be effective 20 years from now. And with various bottlenecks that we could be experiencing in lithium ions and the improving technological advancements of fuel cells, hydrogen cars could become a reality sooner than many people think, not just right now. The ability to top up in a few minutes, lower weight, and a longer range are really good benefits that hydrogen vehicles provide. And as the investments from the Inflation Reduction Act here in the US and global economic superpowers vying to make green hydrogen profitable, costs of this technology are going to dwindle over the next couple of years. And although the first few industries to benefit from that cost reduction are going to be industrial and chemical applications, as well as long duration energy storage, as we all know, those advancements have a good chance of getting carried over into the passenger vehicle market. When exactly will that happen? Only time will tell. But rest assured, we're in a very pivotal time for the global hydrogen race, and although electric vehicles right now are being dominated by batteries, chances are they might not very soon. As usual folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comment section below. 
Would you buy a hydrogen vehicle today or would you wait a couple of decades for the technology to evolve at the right scale? As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.